next up, we'll discuss the best ways to find a job. But before we do that, let's make sure your job search isn't being hindered by fraudulent schemes or employment scams. So let's take a look at this short piece from the Federal Trade Commission on recognizing fraudulent business opportunities. I think the catalyst is money. In my best month, I made 50000 In 2005, Jim Vitale was convicted for his role in a business opportunity scam. There was ridiculous money being made. You know, you could take down $20 million in eight months. He sold the American dream, the dream of being your own boss. It's basically learning how to listen and manipulate people. Once you understand the dynamics of what you're trying to do, which is separate them from their money, that's it. Business opportunity fraud occurs when someone tells you that they will give you what you need to successfully operate a profitable business. And when they do that in a way that guarantees and ensures your success. Every year, thousands of people lose millions of their hard-earned dollars to con artists selling fraudulent business opportunities. The telltale signs of business opportunity fraud are you can earn a lot of money. I will show you how to do it, and you can count on being successful. It all starts with an ad full of promises. Things like stay at home, no real late work required, turnkey business opportunity, things that get people's attention, and then they call in. When somebody responds to one of their advertisements, there's a very careful process to lure them in. Hey, how are you, Jim? First thing I want you to do is grab a pen. I want you to write my name down. Now I have control. You're already, I'm already telling you what to do. I give you my name, my phone number, I tell you a little bit about myself, and then I set an appointment, and I also give you references. Craig D'Angelo is from upstate New York. A TV ad said he could get in on the ground floor of a new high-tech revolution by owning and operating internet kiosks. My main goal for getting into the, for buying the machines it wasn't so that I could have a business and retire and get rich. I was just looking for something to supplement things and really kind of make it easier for my wife and kids. I was a police officer at the time, and I was very cynical, dealt with people who got scammed before. So, you know, I was really looking for the warning signs. It sounded simple and lucrative, a plan that couldn't miss. You got to remember, this is before Wi-Fi and before, uh, you know, Twitter and all that, and before these Blackberries could do everything. Um, so it was really awesome to have a terminal that you could walk up and throw a buck or two in and check your email, get money out of, or pay a bill. He called the Better Business Bureau. There were no complaints against the EasyLink company. Then he sat down with his wife and father to discuss the investment. If I bought two machines. I ended up paying like twelve five a piece for them, so $25,000, which was a lot of money. And um, I didn't have that money laying around. I took a second mortgage on my house. Um, to do this. If somebody has figured out a foolproof way to earn a lot of money, why are they possibly going to tell you how to do that rather than just doing it for themselves all over the place? So be very skeptical. The warning sign came right when it was kind of too late, and I, I think the, the jerk's name was Vitaly. He said, thanks a lot, Craig. We're going to make a lot of money together. And I said, oh, man, I think I'm in for a ride. Like Craig, Deborah Eaton thought she'd found a solid business opportunity. We, I've got right here a um, cashier's check for $8,500 that I mailed to them. The company, Ameripause, repeatedly called Deborah over six months. He had given me, like, four people to call to give me references that have been in the business for the last two years. Let's be honest, you don't know me from a hole in the wall. You call the 1-800 number on the TV. Now, I don't want you to take my word for it. Let me put you in touch with some distributors, people just like you. One of the girls was in Kansas City, so we called her up. And she said that she sent her son through college with just the money she made off the machines. Deborah and her husband hoped to retire on the income they would receive from five prepaid phone card machines. These three were installed in um, uh, different stores and never made a penny. What they usually do is give you just a few references, and those references invariably are in cahoots with the fraudsters. People want to believe that there is some opportunity that they can invest in that will guarantee that they will have financial success. 
There is no such thing. There just is no sure deal. None. The best advice I could give to anybody who's looking to purchase a business opportunity or purchase any investment over the phone is fast no's and slow yeses. Period. The end. Fast no's and slow yeses. If you're considering buying a business opportunity, get a written copy of the disclosure document. It includes information about the company, a list of previous purchasers, and information about lawsuits the company has faced from buyers. Get information in writing about earnings claims. This should include the number and percentage of recent buyers who earned at least as much as the company claims. Interview previous buyers of the business opportunity in person. The FTC requires business opportunity sellers to give potential buyers the names, addresses, and phone numbers of at least 10 previous purchasers. Resist the urge to buy a business over the phone. Promoters of fraudulent businesses are likely to tell you there are a limited number of opportunities, and this is the time to get in on a great deal. Finally, if you suspect that a business opportunity is fraudulent, report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Go to FTC.gov or call 1-877-FTC-HELP. They're nice machines. <laughs> Anybody out there want one? <laughs> I'll give it to you free. <laughs> Well, there still are legitimate opportunities, a lot of them out there, but it always is good sense to make sure that you are not caught up in a scam. So for links and resources dealing with what you just saw, you can visit kbyutv.org slash economic sense. We're back on the set now with Jay Ripley. Jay is the manager of administration for LDS Employment Resources Services worldwide and worked hard to create a new website. It's LDS Jobs to help people of all walks of life with their employment needs. In this segment, Jay will help us understand the online tools we can use to find a job in this tough economy. We also have employment counselors available to answer your questions. You can dial 1-800-298-5298 to talk to them. Now, Jay, how does LDS Jobs help people looking for employment? Well, it's a tool that can has job opportunities and all kinds of resources that can help people in looking for a job. Mm -hmm. There's, there's um, job postings. There's also content that can help them. Uh, in other words, job search tips and things like that. How to prepare yourself, present yourself in an interview, that yes, kind of information. Yes. Is, and, is it fee-based? Do people have to pay money to? No, okay. there's no fee, and that's, that's a great thing. And we're really grateful to the, uh, you know, to the leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and to the First Presidency and the Presiding Bishopric who have supported this. This really is a tool to, to help church leaders assist those who are who are looking for work who reside in their stewardship it's also a tool to help people who are looking for jobs people who are looking to for a career development mm -hmm. and also um, people who are looking to start or improve their small business now we have a, an example of LDS jobs right now it says in yes. the far left hand corner corner beta yes and beta means not the final version that is correct in okay. fact the final version probably won't be out until the first of the year mm -hmm. um, and, and we're really in our infancy stage right now in, in, in this and so every once in a while you'll, you'll see some kind of a bug that, that isn't quite what it should be yet. Now the initial article says helping members find employment but LDS jobs is for all members of all faiths or non-members of any faith right it's just for the entire community. It huh? certainly is okay. yes it is. So when you are on the website you said that there's not only job postings but there is helpful information what type of postings or what type of information do we see right now that you have an example of somebody logging onto an account? Yes mm -hmm. yes and maybe after we log on mm -hmm. we can actually perform a job search. And so you would create an account, get a password set yes. up? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then once we, once we would log on to that, then we would be able to search for a job. So let's just go ahead and see if we could do that. Okay. So here we are. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to search for job postings. Mm -hmm. You can search for companies. But this time we're going to just search for a job. So if he may put in a keyword there, and let's put in the keyword of accountant. Okay. And uh, you could look for a city, but let's, for, for this particular example, mm -hmm. let's just search all of the state of Utah. All right, so the postal code is empty, city's empty, and we're going to look all the way through the state. You gotcha. bet. 
Okay, so you saw there, there that there were right now three mm -hmm. jobs with the with the keyword of account. And this is live right now. If somebody is at is home live. entering that same information, they'd see exactly what we saw. A budget yes. accountant, an account for account for an insurance company, another auditor for the LDS church, yes. those types. Yes. What else? Now once you find uh, a position that you'd like to apply for, then it's just another click or Well, let, mm -hmm. let's click on that that mm -hmm. right there. Alrighty. So it, once he clicks on it, then he gets all of the job search information and or all the job information for that. How much does it pay? What are the requirements for that? How do, how do we go about applying for that particular position? Is it part-time? Is it full-time? Yes. Whether yes. or not a master's degree or bachelor's degree is required? Yes, all, all of that information. Now, all these jobs are, we looked up the state of Utah. Is this rolling out first for our region, for the state no. of Utah, or is it national? It's national. In mm -hmm. fact, it's even beyond national. So mm -hmm. far, um, last week, we just did a search on there, and we found that there are people looking in this from 23 different countries. Oh, fantastic. So right now, it's launched to English-speaking speech countries. Mm -hmm. um, in the first part of next year, we'll also be launching to all the countries that would be speaking Spanish and Portuguese as well. Oh, and I'm glad that you mentioned Spanish because though we have employment counselors available right now for uh, for calls for anybody, confidential calls, if we have a Spanish speaker out there looking for unemployment guidance or job career coaching, we have Spanish speakers who are taking calls right now. So they can call that toll-free number at 1-800-298-5298. Feel welcome to call that. Bienvenido. Huh? Uh, that. So this is a worldwide machine. So are you looking, do you have counselors within your organization looking for these jobs around the world or you have companies coming to you both ways? Yes, we do. Um, we have about 314 employment centers throughout the world right now. Mm. And, and in each of those employment centers, there is staff that, that are doing what we call resource development. They're trying to contact and build, build relationships mm -hmm. with employers. Uh, with this new tool that we have now, once we build a, uh, a relationship with an employer, our website will be able to, uh, if, if they choose, mm -hmm. and if there's enough jobs there, we could crawl that company website and all of those jobs that are on the company website could be automatically put into our job website. So that way when a job seeker is looking for a job, mm -hmm. they don't have to go to hundreds of different company websites, they can do one search right here. And, and there's this, an example right there. So clicking right there, they entered now, a, a search for companies? Now this mm -hmm. one, this, he's, he's doing a search mm -hmm. for companies here. So if we search for, let's say, educational resources in addition to that. Mm -hmm. So you don't only have to search for jobs, you can search for companies. Type, and we're these are search, type of companies that would be affiliated with education. Yes, and you could do okay. a keyword search, but mm -hmm. in this case we're doing a, a search for, by industry, mm -hmm. educational services, in the state of Utah. So we do the search there, and we found that there's 14 educational institutions right now um, here in the state of Utah. Let's say that we go down here to BYU. Mm -hmm. We can pull up the, the organization for mm -hmm. BYU. There's information about BYU. Notice on the right-hand side of there, uh, it tells how many job postings are currently listed with BYU. Well, how fantastic is that? Because not only does it list the company or the organization, but it yes. gives you a little overview so that you are yes. familiar with them if you begin the contacting. That's and right. And then you can see w whether they're actively hiring a large number of people That's or right. a few, and, and th th whether the competition for the jobs is going to be That's fierce right. or easier for so you. So sometimes you may have a, a desire to focus on a particular company. And, and in doing that, then we can search for the company and then search all the jobs within that company. Well, why would we uh, want to search for a specific company? Because we've heard they have great benefits, because we know that they don't, they have, you know, job stability. Is it, are those the kind of things we'd be looking for? Yes, that, mm -hmm. all of those kinds of things. And, and, you know, it could be that that company is closest to us. Mm -hmm. it, it could be that we've had people, we've heard of people that have worked there and they've really liked working there before. It could be that, that they're in an industry that, particularly suits us and we really want to be a part of that um, and and we've seen the kinds of products that they've developed and so this is a company that we're really interested in if we have uh, lost our job we're now looking for a job in another field is when we look up an industry then does that give us a varied look of the type of jobs that are in that industry so that one gentleman who was working in construction who's now looking for other jobs I guess that if we look up an umbrella we might find other uh, divisions in there that we can try to see if my skills in this apply to that's another right area. that's mm -hmm. right um, so what you could he could do is do a keyword search for just jobs mm -hmm. 
but if that doesn't doesn't work, he could do an industry search. I'm in this industry. Is there something close in this industry that I might be able to find? Well, and I want to follow up too because I understand that this website is more of a two-way street. LDS Jobs, it's in the beta form, but the whole goal was rather than having the employee always go out and try to find the company, the company who chooses to work with your website can then seek out employees they through can. it. How does that work? Um, the employer would also create a, a, a profile mm -hmm. and in that profile um, they could post jobs but another thing they could do is try to recruit candidates. For example, um, just recently uh, and this is a brand mm -hmm. new website so we had, don't have a lot of experiences mm -hmm. but just recently an employer called us and they had a, a job that was six figures and they said you know we don't want to post this job because if we post the job we're going to get thousands of resumes mm. coming in and we couldn't handle it all. They said it, and, and this job isn't in our area. We wanted to search for candidates in another state. Can we do that? And we said, we, well, you sure can. Sure. And so they went on there and did a, a, some keyword searches mm -hmm. and they found right now they're interviewing, in the process of interviewing three people that they found on the website. So there's a place there on the site for me to put a profile of myself hoping that possible companies will seek me out. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. What kind of information is important to put in that profile to help me get that job? Maybe we could we mm -hmm. can come over here and, and do a search. Uh, let's say that uh, we're searching, that this is an employer searching for a keyword of training. Okay. He can find somebody there, he mm -hmm. clicks on them. Now notice in here the, mm -hmm. the, the kinds of things that the employer sees. The first section there is the me in 30 seconds, what we call oh. a me in 30 seconds. Okay, so, so a short synopsis of who I am. Yes, in 30 and, seconds. and what I'm looking for, and mm -hmm. this is why, you, why I think you should hire and me. And that's the first thing they see. Yes. Wow, powerful. Okay. And, and, and if that's mm -hmm. compelling enough, they want to click on that and find out more information about you. And when they do that, then they'll be able to see the power statements. They'll be able to see the work history, your education, what are your skills, what languages do you speak, and so those do you, kinds of things. Do you have advice on how to make sure that our me statement in 30 seconds is as effective as we need it to be? There, mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, we have a, really a whole workshop, uh, the career workshop, where people will come in and they, they will develop their me in 30 seconds. And the one thing I think is really helpful there mm -hmm. is that they're, they're not only uh, taught how to do it, but but they, they, they write it out and then they practice it and we practice it during the, during the career workshop. And those, there's some information on screen right now about where on the site you can find career workshops yes. in the listening to the times. And the more that you can educate yourself and train yourself to be a good job seeker, the more likely you are to get that job. We have a, a caller on right now. John from American Fork has a question. Welcome to Economic Sense. What question do you have for Jay tonight? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, question. Uh, my question is, I'm a technical writer in the software development industry. Mm -hmm. My age is 49. I'm finding it hard during this last over, last economic downturn to get a job. My, my concerns are, do I need to find another career or develop my credentials in technical writing more? Oh, great. It's about question. crossroads. Mm -hmm. and now, and we've been known as like a little second Silicon Valley. I mean, we had a lot of tech, technology, a lot of technical writers here with the booming of different software companies. You bet. So, is that still a forward moving industry, or what would you recommend for him? You and know, I, I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. not qualified to, to answer that, and I, I, I would have to sit down with him and actually see, let's, let's do some research on this and see if that's really a career you, you want or should stay in into. So in that case, he, talking to a career counselor about that, or can he go to the website, I guess, and look up that industry and find out whether or not there are plenty of job positions out there? And one of the things that I, that I like uh, about the website, too, is that there are helpful links. We saw earlier before where they were, uh, he was able to, to show us that there were some career workshops coming up in the, in the local area. Also involved in that is some local links. Sometimes those local links are to, to resources that are just like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it tells us about what's happening in the local industry, in the local economy, and, and to see how that would work out. Right. If you want to, in fact, there's a, an example of some of the There on the right-hand side there, yeah. You mm -hmm. see all kinds of, of links uh, that would be developed locally and specialized for that particular economy. So John and could look there and he could also go back to the state of Utah side and find out what they're yes. saying, which industries are popping, and then find out if those industries need technical writers. Exactly. Go directly to the companies that exactly. are growing. Now this is an example. It says Silicon Slopes. That's one of the companies that uh, is listing positions. 
Um, you, you, that's a, a job board. In fact, I, I'm not familiar with that mm -hmm. particular one, so I'm not. Well, I'm that's not the too, beauty of clicking on a resource link. You never know where you're going to go. It sure. is. Mm -hmm. You bet. And the website again is LDS. LDSjobs.org. LDSjobs.org. Yes. Still in its beta. So you are it you is. receiving feedback from people who are saying, "I'm still looking for this, or this kind of information would be helpful for me." We are, and 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 what's really good about that is that we just keep improving the site. And, uh, and we're getting some good feedback about it. Uh, one person um, decided on a Saturday mm -hmm. to register in the website. And, and uh, on Monday, an employer contacted them. And, and they said, well, we're, we're interested in you. Let's set up a time to interview. They interviewed the next day on Tuesday, and he was working on Wednesday. Um, and, and so like you said, mm -hmm. it, it not only is, are, are job seekers looking for employers, but employers are there looking for job seekers. Hmm. So it's really important to build a good profile, your me in 30 seconds and your power statements. Well, we're things. learning about your website, ldsjobs.org. We've also learned that the state of Utah has its own employment yes. pages. Is it smart for us to list ourselves in multiple websites, our profiles, and, and, and get out there? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't think you want to put all your eggs in any one basket. And, and as many things as you could do and many kinds of different kinds of activities. And remember, um, a lot of times I think that looking on a website mm -hmm. is, is kind of a, a passive kind of an activity mm -hmm. and, and, and is, this is just one tool. It's, it's, one, it's one arrow in the quiver and, and they should be out there networking as well and there's, there's a lot of other activities they should be doing, not just searching on an, on and, an internet. And for more of those ideas, of course, they can go to LDSjobs.org and find yes. out because personal relationships with someone in the company proves very, very helpful. It really does. Hired. Thank you it really does. for your help and for your advice. He's given us a lot of expertise right there. Now, the information he has shared this evening will certainly help many of us become self-sustaining and more satisfied with our employment. Once again, we'd like to remind you that employment specialists and unemployment insurance experts are here in our studio tonight to take your questions in English or in Spanish, you can call 1-800-298-5298. Economic Sense is made possible by contributing viewers of KBYU and by the Utah Housing Coalition, Community Action Services and Food Bank, and Utah State University Extension.